it's Mrs. Deeks and Herbie. Herbie's a little bit tired today, so he's going to listen to the story, and I hope you're all settled in to listen to today's story as well. This is called Once Upon an Ordinary School Day. Are you sitting tight, Herb? So you're going to listen? Want to go to sleep? He's going to listen. Once upon an ordinary school day, an ordinary boy woke from his ordinary dreams. He got out of his ordinary bed and had an ordinary pee in an ordinary wash, put on his ordinary clothes and ate his ordinary breakfast. The ordinary boy brushed his ordinary teeth, kissed his ordinary mum goodbye and set off for his ordinary school. And as he walked through the ordinary streets, past the ordinary shops and across the ordinary roads, the ordinary boy fought his ordinary thoughts. It's very grey and bleak, isn't it? And when he reached the ordinary school, the ordinary boy had an ordinary game of football with his ordinary friends until the ordinary school bell rang. The ordinary boy went into his ordinary classroom and sat his ordinary desk. Then, something quite out of the ordinary happened. I wonder what that could be. Good morning, everybody, said a quite extraordinary figure bounding into the classroom. My name is Mr. Gee and I'm your new teacher. Now you don't know me and I don't know you, so to help me get to know you, I've had an idea. As Mr. Gee handed out papers, he said, For a first lesson together, I want you to listen to some music and I want you to let the music make pictures in your heads. Is that clear? With the bright colours in here as well. Looks like a very fun teacher, doesn't he? And the ordinary children whispered, He's balmy. He's bonkers. He's as nutty as a fruitcake. Music, pictures. What's he on about? And Mr. Gee said, shh, just close your eyes and open your ears and listen. And the music began, a rumbling, roaring, thunderous music that boomed and crashed around the classroom. Suddenly, it stopped. And Mr. Gee said, tell me what the music made you think of. One girl shouted, stampeded horses. Someone else said, no, it was racing cars. The ordinary boy said, I saw elephants, sir, and there were hundreds of them. Yes, laughed Mr. Gee. Isn't it wonderful? Now, I want you all to try and put what you hear on paper. Start writing. Look, it's starting to come to colour here, isn't it? And as the music grew and swooped and danced and dived once more, the ordinary boy began to write. He used words he didn't fully understand and his story made no sense, but it didn't matter and he didn't care. And he wrote as fast as he could, but it would never be fast enough. There was just too much to say. It was as if a dam had burst in his head and words just came flooding out. Has that ever happened to you, boys and girls? I know that's happened to me before when I've been writing. And the words were his toys and he was lost, lost in the game, the storytelling game. And it was extraordinary. Look at all that. That's all in his head. That's his imagination. There's lots going on in there, isn't there? Some dinosaurs, elephants, birds, crocodiles. I would love to read this story. That is swimming now with the dolphins and the fish. So much colour has come to life, hasn't it? All the birds. And he's even flying with them. Bet his story is extraordinary as well. And the other children? Some wrote stories about giants and some about magic. Some wrote the brave girls. And some are boys with lightning shaped scars on their foreheads. Some just made stuff up because the music didn't mean anything to them. And Pauline Crawford read the Beano. Some wrote stories they thought would please the teacher and some became heroes and some became villains and some thought the whole thing was silly and Billy Peterson fell asleep. And at the end of the extraordinary school day, the ordinary boy saw Mr. Gee getting into his car. Sir, said the ordinary boy, that was the best lesson ever. I've never felt like that before. It was magic. Still think I'm bonkers, said Mr. Gee, smiling. The ordinary boy blushed. 
I can't wait to read your stories tonight, said Mr. Gay. See you tomorrow. And he disappeared in a cloud of smoke out of the school gates. Even his car is pretty funky, isn't it? And when it was bedtime, the ordinary boy put on his ordinary pyjamas, brushed his ordinary teeth, had his ordinary pee, kissed his ordinary mum and dad and went to sleep in his ordinary bed and had extra ordinary dreams. Oh, there he is in his pyjamas, flying in with the birds again. That is such a lovely story. And I know, boys and girls, that you go to school and you have extraordinary days quite a lot of the time as well and that you go home and you dream about them too. Have a little think about what's the best memory you have of school and which lesson has really made you think and enjoy yourself when you're writing too. Bye, Hibs. Are you going to say bye? No, he's asleep. Bye, boys and girls.